And this Friday, we're training the spotlight on Germany and the way it's handling its past. Last November, the country was rocked by the discovery of a huge trove of artworks looted by the Nazis during World War II. Over 1,200 paintings and drawings, thought to have been stolen from Jewish families, had been stashed away in the Munich apartment of Cornelius Gerlitt, the son of an influential art dealer who'd been close to the Hitler regime. But as much as the art, what made the headlines was the revelation that the find had been kept secret by the authorities for over a year. The Gerlitt affair, as it's become known, has thrown up questions about how Germany handles such cases. In fact, hundreds of paintings allegedly plundered by the Nazis still hang in the country's museums. And some stolen property has yet to be returned to the families of the original owners. So, is Germany guilty of not doing enough to right the wrongs of the Nazi regime? And Maye and Damien McGuinness have this report. The painting may have belonged to her grandfather, but until November, Irene Lawford Henriksen had never even seen it. Until, that is, she saw a picture of it in the German press. Painted by the artist Karl Spitzweg, it was found amid the trove of Nazi plundered art in a Munich apartment. It was a favourite painting of her grandfather, the German publisher Henry Henriksen, who was murdered by the Nazis, as he notes in his diary. Besonders ein entzückender Spitzweg erfreut mich immer wieder von neuem. This was one of the works acquired under dubious circumstances by the art collector Hildebrand Gorlitt, an official art dealer in Nazi Germany. It spent decades secretly stored in his son's apartment. Irene is happy it's been discovered, but she also feels angry. That was a surprise to hear about the Gullet discovery, but what I thought was an absolute disgrace was that the way when the German authorities found it uh, two years before, they put everything into storage and they didn't tell anybody. So it was really um, uh, a double, you know, double criminality. Many descendants of Jewish families whose property was stolen by the Nazis are still fighting for justice, not only to get their art back, but also their real estate. Peter Zonenthal's family fled to the US in 1938. He moved to Berlin 20 years ago to get land back, which was taken from his grandparents. But the local government in Teltow, on the outskirts of Berlin, is refusing to give back some of the land which today is in an environmental protection zone. There's a fundamental violation of the basic law of Germany which says you can't take somebody's property without compensation. And because this involves uh, the Holocaust, there's a moral uh, responsibility to do what's right and not simply do what formalistically is convenient. Seventy years after the end of the Second World War, the debate about restoration of looted art is as topical as ever. No laws have been passed to ensure restitution, so families often have a tough fight convincing local authorities or museum directors to give up star pieces in their collections. The historian Beate Schreiber is researching the case of a Jewish family which is trying to recuperate various paintings, including one currently hanging in one of Bavaria's most prestigious museums. Germany is using its federalist structure as an excuse. Everything is being blamed on the regional governments. But on the national level, there are also problems with art collections, such as in Germany's parliament. The authorities like to come across as being really active, and from time to time they do write reports for the Jewish organisations which are making claims. But the Gurnet affair shows that Germany's authorities have very little empathy, and that they're taking some quite scandalous decisions. One thing is clear. Germany has a real lack of experts in this field. The Federal Centre for Research of Looted Art has a budget of only €2 million Euros a year. Not enough, say critics. But the row sparked off by the Gurlitt case could change things. The German state has often expressed a clear wish to return looted goods, and the recommendations are there. But obviously, the Gurlitt affair has shaken everyone, 
and has been like a bomb in Germany. It is possible that this will push those responsible to finally act once and for all. The first steps in this direction are already being taken. Various proposed laws are being discussed and the working group responsible for tracking down the original owners of the Gerlich collection has been expanded to 10 people. So Henry Hinrichsen's grandchildren are hopeful that it won't be another 70 years before they finally get back their grandfather's treasured painting. Well, for more on this, we're joined now by our guest, Mark Mazarovsky, the co-founder of the Holocaust Art Restitution Project, who's joining us now from Washington. Hello, thank you very much for being with us on France 24. How do you explain this apparent lack of political will? Well, it's not uh, something that just happened yesterday. It's been uh, endemic in, uh, in Germany, but I wouldn't say that it's just a German problem. It's a European problem. So... Um, Obviously, the Germans uh, can make statements, but it's very difficult for them to actually act and be practical about these matters because uh, it's a little bit like a Gordian knot. You pull the key thread and then the entire structure unravels. And the Gerlit affair might just be that thread, but we'll see. Are you hoping the Gerlit case will spark a change? I hope so, because I don't know what else could, uh, could be more scandalous than the idea that a, uh, an old man has been hiding uh, 1,400 works of art in his apartment pretty much as a public secret for decades now. And uh, you wonder, first of all, how many Gerlitz there are in Germany and how many museums are behaving like uh, Mr. Gerlitz. And basically, yes, it needs to be completely overhauled, uh, the entire structure. The standing commissions are meaningless, like the Limbach Commission. There's no, there's no justice coming out of that commission. And I think uh, some of your other speakers uh, were correct. The uh, the political will to do anything significant in Germany is seriously lacking. And uh, it's not by sending checks to survivors that you get rid of the uh, looted art problem. And it's not just artworks, as we saw in that report. Uh, what kind of cases have you been faced with? Well, I think mostly it has to do with degenerate art cases and uh, forced sales. And the forced sale problem is one that is also quite relevant to Mr. Gerlitt because uh, I'm not sure how much you know, but he, uh, he was a regular presence in auction houses uh, in the Third Reich and also in occupied territories. He loved to go to the auctions and purchase all sorts of items. And frankly, he didn't really care too much what the provenance was. And uh, in those days, prices were quite depressed, especially for modern works, which uh, he relished. And tell us about the kind of cases you've been handling. Well, mostly uh, not necessarily these types of cases in Germany. I've been mostly focused on cases out of France. And uh, the French are in the same kind of problem. In fact, it's extraordinary that they haven't really said anything publicly about the Gerlitt affair since most of the items in the Gerlitt collection appear to have been purchased in France. And in some measure, the French hold one of the trump cards because they have, once they lay a claim to these items, then it opens up the Gerlitt affair into an international uh, into an international problem. And so far, nothing has come out of the Ministry of Culture or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So um, we're waiting. And is there any official international body handling this? Absolutely not. In fact, that's been one of the great disappointments uh, ever since the Washington Conference of December 98, which had brought together more than 45 countries to try to address these problems, uh, the end result was simply a series of non-binding principles. And you know what happens with non-binding principles. Everybody goes home and is satisfied that they pass them, but they don't apply them. So uh, we've been waiting now for 15 years, and so far there haven't been any results. We would hope, for instance, that the European Parliament might take charge of this question, but they probably will not. And the Austrians, ironically, are the only ones who passed a law that mandates restitution, but only in terms of items in federal collections. But still, it is the only country in the world that actually has a standing legislation which addresses this problem. The French don't, the Dutch don't, the Belgians don't, the Germans certainly don't. So uh, the answer really lies in the political sphere. And perhaps uh, we need more girlhood affairs to shake things up. And this clearly is a difficult fight for the families who try and uh, get those artworks back. It's very difficult for them. Indeed, the legal system is basically stacked against them. It's a very costly affair, so only fairly wealthy families can gain access to the system. And again, unless there is a willing prosecutor who recognizes the moral and ethical implications of these cases, basically, on a strict legal basis, uh, the families don't have too many chances to, uh, 
to prevail. And how it's do you how do you explain this lack of political will? Is this a shame, a desire to put the past behind them, for, for perhaps for Germany or for France? How do you explain it? Well, it's complicated. I think it's a mixture of everything that you just mentioned, plus uh, the fact that uh, it's an annoyance, and there is uh, a sense that. It is our art and it's nobody else's. And if it's in our collections, there's a good reason for it. And there's been a, tra a traditional tendency uh, amongst museums to basically uh, be very proprietary about any culture item that enters a collection. And it's extremely difficult to part ways with those, uh, with those items. So in other words, it's nothing short of a legal and political war that would sway these institutions. And I guess the problem in Europe is compounded by the fact that most of these collections are state-owned. In other words, it's not like in the United States, where most collections are private. So this is a question that goes directly into the Ministry of Culture, directly into the Chancellor's office or in the Prime Minister's office, depending on the country. And again, it is a political question that has to be addressed by Ms. Merkel herself in order for things to change. So I would send all the claims and all the protests directly to the Chancellor's office, because she is the only one who can actually make this situation changed. Mark Mazarowski, thank you very much for giving us your point of view thank you. on that story. Thank you. And that's it for our focus segment. Stay tuned. Coming up after this short break, we'll bring you some culture and sports.